You made it, everyone. You made it. What the heck happened to Scent? He used to be on top of the world. There used to be a time when there were plenty of Centurion mains out there, and I think many of us would like to go back and relive those days. Well, I'd say a few of us would like that. Those were the glory days of old, when the Roman Revolution was at its peak. I won't lie to you, though. It was a little bit overpowered in some aspects, but heck. That's when For Honor had a little bit of zing to it, and a little bit of zang. Now we see the same old moves on every single hero, and that's okay to like that, you know, no hate to those people, but we are missing some of the coolest moves that have ever existed in the For Honor experience, such as the Renown Quick Grab. Oh, they word! Oh my god, dude. You gotta be kidding me. <laughs> Oh my god, it worked, dude! Oh, oh my, my god! god. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Did you see that? Alright, that guy tried to guard break me because I was conditioning him and spamming the quick grab move as much as possible, and that's the first time it actually worked. It didn't work the 20 times that I tried beforehand. I don't need walls, all I need is quick grab. Okay. <laughs> yes, he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> Better punish right there. Okay, I don't know if I can come back from this. Oh, okay, there we go. Yes. We're gonna do the punch. It's nice. Baby. Now isn't it great to look back on For Honor, how For Honor used to be like? There was tons of issues with it beforehand, but I think a few changes to the CCU added on to old For Honor would have been perfect for me personally. But we don't want to dive into that. What we're here to talk about is Quick Grab. Now this move <laughs> is just hilarious. Don't you guys love it? I'd say debatably one of the most useless moves out there before the CCU and Centurion's rework. Frankly, people can react to guard breaks and having that within a mix-up is just downright hilarious. It wasn't the most fancy looking move and it wasn't the most helpful move within Centurion's kick, but by gum, by gum guys, if you guys ever did hit someone, they definitely were drunk or had their monitors off. Keep in mind, this build of Centurion was before his rework. He still had a ton of issues when it came to trying to open players up, but that was the fun part about his kit. Even if he didn't have strong openers, he had fast variable time to have his which couldn't be guard broken, don't forget about that. 66 damage wall punish cutscene, you guys remember that? I'd put my controller down when i just get hit by that. Lots of stamina damage on his kick and punches and the best of all unfeignable zone attacks and unblockable heavies that couldn't be fainted. <laughs> I'm gonna zone you so bad. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Man, those are good times. You never saw those. And if you did see them, me personally, I've got hit by them quite a few times. <laughs> but enough about my shortcomings. We all know how the box plays. Let's not forget about his punch and his kick were just incredibly slow by today's standards. So slow that even if you were playing with your feet on your controllers or keyboard, you'd be able to dodge them. One small detail that I like to point out is that his punch used to stun and blind them. But in the live version today, they removed it. I don't really think it would have proved to be an issue with this current vortex, but that's just my opinion. I kind of like that when you get punched in the face, you should get stunned because if you ever gotten punched in the face, it can really take the wind out of you and you ain't gonna see shit for a while. But I digress, the one thing that I have really enjoyed about Old Centurion was that he could use his kick after his knee, after a parry punish, and it would take so much freaking stamina damage away from your opponent. And I think that was a little overpowered on itself, but you know, when looking at the full picture of Centurion, it wasn't that big of a deal because he didn't really have any openers, no unblockables, and no kick. It's just chip damage, and I think that was fine just to have that as it is. But with his current setup, or with his current rework, it obviously would have been a little bit too strong because going blind and also having no stamina with his 50-50 unblockable mix-up that's feignable now would have had the community in an uproar. And sure, you can argue that landing a heavy after every parry is more optimal. Keep in mind, before the CCU, Centurion and Aramusha could both both land heavies after a heavy parry. So it was actually really good and it made them really strong in that small aspect. But we're here to roleplay and have fun as Leonidas, even though he's a Spartan and this is a Roman, doesn't matter. 
doesn't matter because kicking and punching is what I want to do in a fighting game, for goodness sakes. Centurion covers all of my desires. His heavies were also faster and it felt like they hit harder too. And it was so satisfying, landing all of that beautiful chip damage. And after four blocked heavies, you already generated 20 freaking damage. I dare you to try and parry a variable timed heavy from Centurion when you're out of stamina. Enjoy a rusty blade in your face, why don't you? The main thing is that he had tons of moves to use and it was just fun. I know many Centurion players that really enjoy the hero even though he wasn't the strongest or the most meta pick. And those are just some of the reasons why I really enjoyed playing old Centurion. Fast forward today and Ubisoft has turned him into a unit. Chargeable punch just like Warden's Bash, faster kick, feignable zone, feignable unblockable charged heavy finishers, and faster chain lights. But of course my dear Centurion mains, they removed the 66 damage cutscene. Sad face. They also slowed down his heavies and took away the small guard break and vulnerabilities that he did have, but they still kept the variable timed heavies. There's also a few more things that got deleted from Centurion. They removed my dear old quick grab, and they also removed the kick after the knee and put in the punch, which does make more sense but I'm a bit sad because all those moves combined with the knee into the kick it felt like I was playing Leonidas. Another thing they changed is that you aren't allowed to get a heavy after heavy parry anymore and I won't lie to you Centurion Lights are the most wimpiest attacks in the entire roster in my opinion. If you think there's a wimpier attack out there you tell me down in the comments right now. It looks like he's trying to hit someone with a noodle I kid you not. It doesn't really make sense because his heavies feel like he puts so much power into them which is why a lot of people like using them but his lights his lights I don't know it's, it's like a, it's like the dog hitting me with the bat because I'm horny. Like, that's not gonna work. <laughs> that's not- that ain't work. That, that, that ain't gonna work. <laughs> now that I'm thinking about this, I remember a friend who was uh, playing the game a long time ago, and I think it was around season 2 or season 3. You guys remember when after a parry you could guard break your opponent? Well, any veteran player or any good player would either GB to land a heavy attack, or throw them on a wall to land a stronger top heavy or whatever, but instead, my friend would use other moves such as a light, or zone after confirming a light parry or just a GB. And then I asked him, dude, what the heck are you doing? You're supposed to use a heavy for a light parry and it's the highest damage punish. That's how you win the game. And you know what that mad lad told me? He said, it's boring using the same move every single time. And I thought to myself, hmm, you're kind of right, man. I guess I am kind of obligated to go for a light attack. When I get heavy parry or if I get a light parry, it is just a heavy attack. A lot of people like the simplicity of that. And that's why it feels like you're just playing rock, paper, scissors in this game. You're making reads, you're, you're guessing, you're hoping that you're your opponent makes some mistakes. And the point of this is to make a hero with different parry punishes so that they actually look different and attack differently from other heroes that are getting released. And so with this rework, it brought him up to S tier. He truly deserved this. He no longer needed to hug walls and turtle with the rework. And at that time, he was considered one of the best heroes in the entire game. Great for setting up ganks in 4v4 while charging that punch, allowing your teammates to land in a solid damage heavy, and having his grab punches be more consistent with Haymaker just feels amazing. Beforehand, it was finicky and the timing was really weird, but now it's smooth as butter. And let's not forget how much damage Haymaker does. With three punches, it does a total of 15 damage. That's a Shinto ton of damage. And add to the fact that it also does stamina damage, it's actually insane. But Box, why are you telling us this? We already know Centurion is good. I'm telling you all this because every rework after Centurion except for Peacekeeper, of course, has gotten incredible buffs that have made them insane in 4v4 and also duels. So for the next part of this video, I want to talk about why Centurion feels weaker now, even after receiving a well-done rework, in my opinion, that kept him strong, but not overpowered. I was always scared to fight a good Centurion, but I never felt like I couldn't beat one if I made good reads against him, even with a slightly weaker hero. But now I can simply ignore him with the top tier hero like Zhang Hu or Jiang Jun and deal with him by range. And when I say range, I mean utilizing a hero's undodgeables or unblockables with their far-reaching heavies, while target swapping to their teammate to hit them from behind or externally. And so let's dive on in, shall we? I believe they've all been overbuffed and power creep is a real thing. Some of these heroes have gotten crazy things that have made them incredibly safe to play and easy to play too. I feel like Centurion's rework was the perfect middle ground for balance. But Ubisoft just loves to keep up in themselves until one day <laughs> they'll have to keep reworking every single old hero to make them stronger. So after experiencing the five years of development in this special special game. It's only natural that heroes get stronger because people get better at the game, let's face it. But sadly, this game decided to take a serious amount of crack and make some heroes a little bit annoying to deal with. These are the reasons why Centurion fell off. What's my point? My point is that devs are trying to make this game easier to play. 
How so? Look at the new heroes and look at the new reworks. Look at the easy ganks we're getting with each new hero. Jang Jun's rework allowed him to use an unblockable zone attack. That zone attack has so much cleave and hitbox that it is one of the best moves in the entire game. That is why he is one of the best heroes in the entire game now. Target swapping with that externally with that wide unblockable costing little to no stamina. He can also get his stamina back after seafooing again. It just becomes one of the most dangerous tools in the entire game. And frankly, one of the easiest things to do to get value. Couple that in with his unblockable side heavies that in tremendous trajectory, he was already one of the best heroes to play in Dominion with that. He didn't really need an unblockable zone. I know for a fact if I have a JJ on my team or two JJs, we're automatically winning the game. And then let's not forget about Orochi and the pirate being able to dodge cancel out of everything and then Shinobi having those infinite iframes with his backflip and having an incredibly good ganking tool with his sickle rain. It's just tons of good things and very powerful things that really help you out in 4v4. If you don't have these certain heroes, you're bound to lose the game. I mean, Sickle Rain literally keeps you in place for two to three seconds. You are staring at your screen, watching a shinobi cut your throat. And the good shinobis will delay that and irritate you so that there's enough time for his teammate to heavy you in the face. And I don't even want to talk about how shinobi can just somersault you and take away all your HP while his teammate does top heavies on your face. Ah, that's fun. That's good fun. Thanks for not letting me play the game, Ubisoft. What about Raider? Well, Raider is also another hero that outclasses Centurion pretty much every single way. For God's sakes, Raider can feign his zone four to five times before he runs out of stamina. And also he has hyper armor on his chain heavies, which have tremendous cleave. Couple that with his storming tap, he's just a nightmare to deal with when it comes to team fights if you're using a hero like Centurion. So I'll just quickly go over some of the heroes that have a significantly easy time against Centurion simply because they don't have to face him face to face. Zhanhu's undodgeable zone attack, his unblockable side heavies, which have incredible range. Jang Jun, of course, like we mentioned. Armush's dodge attack, which has tons of iframes and his blockade which you can cancel instantly after every single move. Kyoshin's dodge attack also is incredibly good with iframes and allows him to go into Kaze's stance right away to set up ganks and protect himself from any other attack. Pirate, Orochi, and Jen who are able to dodge cancel into another dodge attack, into another dodge attack, into a zone, into an unblockable mix-up, whatever their mix-up is, negates a lot of what Centurion can probably do without a good teammate. Shigoki also has a dodge bash with an infinite amount of iframes and hyper armor afterwards to start up his mix-up, so it's very risky to try attack him. Berserker also has an incredible dodge light attack which has lots of iframes and enters into his unblockable mix-up or hyper armor mix-ups. Now these are just some of the heroes to name a few. A lot of the heroes that have dodge attacks or just dodge bashes will do incredibly well against Centurion in 4v4. So as you guys can see from examples that I've given, these heroes don't fight face to face. Centurion wants to fight you face to face, he's a good duelist. It's all about target swapping and hitting your enemies from behind now. Avoiding mix-ups with your iframes, whether it be your dodge bash or dodge attack, Centurion has none of these things. Granted, granted, Centurion is a great ganker in a 2v1 situation, but in a 2v2 situation, a team fight, which is most of what Dominion is about, you have to play him almost perfect to get good value against this meta because there will be unblockables flying across the world hitting you in the face and there's nothing Centurion can do about it. Centurion feels like an incredibly outdated hero compared to these heroes because Ubisoft decided that giving heroes more defensive tools would help the offensive meta. I think they meant well when they wanted a hero to punish a missed bash, but in doing so, you allow a hero to negate other heroes mix up with little punishment involved. And add to the fact that allowing a hero to dodge recovery after another dodge attack is just putting more salt on the wound. It means you'll never catch that Orochi, that Janu, that Pirate, that Jangjun, and then you'll have to make a read because they have unblockable mix up right after their incredible range. It's just an uphill battle for Centurion because these heroes aren't looking at you when they attack. So what's the solution? How do we fix this? Basically, Ubisoft needs to stop giving everybody dodge cancels out of every single attack, which I doubt they'll do because they think that's a wonderful idea, and makes a hero unique and viable. But the truth is, there are plenty of ways to make a hero viable without making them a dodge-heavy assassin hero. And quite frankly, I'm surprised they haven't added another trap here. I think a lot of people want another hero that uses traps, like Nusha, 
that's actually a cool mechanic that should be invested upon. But other than that, the only way to fix it is to make it so that every other hero gets a dodge attack as well, or dodge bash to deal some damage and punish those people who want to external you all the time. That's where we've come to, folks. That is that is where we are in this society, all right? 2022, everybody gonna get this. They're gonna get a dodge attack, they're gonna get a full block, they're gonna get a dodge bash with iframes, you get a dodge bash, you get a dodge attack, you get instant recovery, all that good stuff. And that's just the truth. Just look at all the balanced decisions that have been happening so far. Heat to carry has a dodge attack. Why? 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 <laughs> I don't know. So let's fix Centurion, shall we? First change I would do is give him a dodge bash that either deals damage just like Shigoki's right away and it's gonna be a dodge punch. I don't really care if he gets like a dodge attack or a heavy attack. I want a dodge punch. I want to punch more people. Let him get into his punch mix up after that or a kick mix up or just allow him to do a forward dodge into a kick recovery. All that stuff and allow him to get into his unblock, but mix up after his punch. That would fix pretty much his entire kit. Then I would allow him to feign his forward top heavy so he has another form of mixing people up just in case they decide to roll. Keep the hyper armor as well. The next change I'd like for him to do is to increase the time of when he can feint his punch because right now I believe every other vortex bash can feint at the last second while he still cannot, which makes his offense a little bit weaker in comparison. The last thing I would give him is his ability to enter his punch mix up after a whiffed heavy attack. I cannot tell you how many times I let the chain heavy fly and people just dodge it. Every other hero that has a bash is able to get into some sort of chain offense after a missed heavy attack or any zone attack or whatever. So it would only be fair and reasonable to allow him to punch or dodge forward into his kick or forward heavy finisher to get into his mix up to punish people who dodge. And that's it. Those are all the changes that I believe would make Centurion much stronger without having to make him too strong and keep him within the confines of For Honor. So that is it for this video. Thank you so, so much for watching it and making it this far. Do you agree or disagree with why Centurion is in a spot he is right now? And remember, there are some heroes worse off than he is, but Centurion's always been a favorite in this community. So we gotta look out for him, you know? Let me know your thoughts about Centurion and any other hero in this meta. I would love to read your comments, and if you enjoyed the video or learned something new, be sure to slap a like button, subscribe to see more content like this, and be sure to follow my social medias, my Twitter, my Discord, and my Twitch. I'll be streaming Elden Ring this week and much, much more. That'll do for now. That'll do. Bye-bye. See you later.